Hi, I'm Cameron Beheshti. The last time I was here, I was on home oxygen and I was giving tips on the use of home oxygen. So I'm going to redo that clip because now I can talk a bit better. Because uh, about 14 days ago I had a lung transplant. So I'm breathing room air, don't need to use any oxygen assistance, and I'm using somebody else's lungs, some wonderful family, somebody donated their body organs when they passed away and I was lucky enough to get uh, a set of new lungs and it's, uh, it's amazing, it's really a gift. Um, so the first tip is that this is a cannula, this is a nasal cannula that you use for home oxygen uh, as you might know and um, this is what's called a high flow nasal cannula and the thing about a high flow nasal cannula is it supports an oxygen flow of up to 10 liters a minute and there's different kinds some of the high flow cannulas they have pouches that sit here um, so you can recognize those ones this one doesn't I prefer this one because it's quieter um, now something that's very odd is that some of the people uh, around Toronto that they're their suppliers, they give them the cannulas for their oxygen. Most cannulas only support up to six liters a minute of oxygen. And I've actually met people who the doctors have prescribed them between six and ten up to fifteen liters a minute of oxygen, but they've only got cannulas that will allow a flow of regular flow. So they think they're on ten liters a minute, but they're only getting six liters a minute out of the uh, tubes. And uh, makes no sense. So if you're ever supposed to go above six liters a minute, make sure you've got a cannula that will allow that much oxygen to go through up into your nose. Otherwise it defeats the purpose. Here's the second tip. These cannulas when you're at home are connected to a, a supply for the oxygen. In my case it's a condenser or a compressor, whatever they call it, that takes the oxygen right out of the room air and sends it down these long tubes. Now, the cannula collect, connects to the tube with one of these connectors. Some of the oxygen supply companies, these connectors are solid pieces of plastic. I got one where the connector swivels. And the swiveling collector is much better because as you walk around your house, what tends to happen is these hoses, they coil up just because you're moving. You end up with a big mess of, wrapped up mess of, hose that you always have to go back and untangle. But if you get one of these swiveling connectors, it does a lot of the untangling by itself. So I don't know why these suppliers don't always give swiveling connectors, but ask for them. The, th the third tip is that, um, like in my home, I need a hose that's 50 feet long so that I can have full mobility from on the first floor, go upstairs to the second floor and so on. Um, I met a guy, and I think I've met more than one. His supplier, instead of giving him a 50-foot hose, would only give him 25-foot hoses. So he had to connect the hoses with one of these connectors, 25 feet between himself and his oxygen supply. But these connectors are the things that get snagged on the corners of furniture, uh, when you're going around a corner, or they can get snagged under a door where the hose would just slide. So this poor fellow, who was on oxygen and couldn't go very far without great breathing difficulty, he'd be coming downstairs and his connector would snag 25 feet back upstairs in the bedroom. So then he'd have to walk all the way, turn around, go all the way back up the stairs just to unhook himself. It's actually quite cruel. And um, so I just said to him, they have 50 foot hoses, just demand they bring you some 50 foot hoses. And guess what? A week later he had 50 foot hoses, he didn't have these connectors, and his life was a lot easier. Um, I'm going to pause for a sec.